Hi oh guys, uh, hope you're all keeping well. Um, I had a, had a day off from the uh, Aprilia today. I did do a little bit of work on the swinging arm, trying to get some of the scratches out of it. Not, um, but I had to do a car for someone today. That took up most of my day. And I had about an hour to spare tonight and up before it got dark. And I just managed to do a bit on a swinging arm, see how I could get the, uh, you know, get the scratches out. I've got all my bushes come through today, uh, you know, brand new. Uh, I've got the seals for it. That's my heater just come on, by the way. Um, yeah, so I've got all the seals. So I've got swinging arm ones and I've got, where are we? Oh, these are the smaller ones. So these are the ones that go in a uh, rocker assembly. So, you know, so I've got all the bearings, I've got all the seals. But I thought before I do that, I'm going to try and clean the swinging arm up and, you know, give it a good buff up and uh, see what I can do with it. Because, uh, you know, it really would be nice if I could be blast it inside, but I haven't got such a, a thing. So I'll do what I can with it. Maybe I can wire brush it or something. Uh, I don't want to stick it back as it is. And from there, so I was sitting in a chair tonight, a bit bored. So I thought to myself, what? Well, I don't think you've seen this bike uh, that's sitting on the table here. This this was um, a scratch-built bike that I built. I think it must have been in about 80, 85, 84, 85, when I was working at Folds. I'd gone to a, I think it was a bike show, not a bike show, uh, a model show, and so they were running the Gripney Let Riders. I think it was a Rick Max team. When they was doing a sort of like a James Bond thing where their bikes went along and a helicopter went up and a plane took off and a, a lorry and all stuff like that. And it was really interesting, you know. That's when, uh, you know, the model shows used to be good. Um, but that's where I first saw my Elect Rider, an Elect Rider running on two wheels. And I thought, oh, I think it might have been Ali Pally. I think it might have been at Alex Alexander Palace. And uh, I couldn't believe how they ran on two wheels. I thought, how do they stay up? You know, all the questions that everybody asks you. Um, so at that time, I was bringing up two kids and I didn't really have a lot of money. And I thought, I'd like to build one. And I thought, I've already got a real motorbike. I think at the time I had a, a CBX 550 um, Honda. And I think I'd come off it, I hit a car or something, I know I had an accident on it, and I'd put a new frame on it, and I, the old frame was in the garage. So I sort of took the measurements off the frame, and I sort of scaled it up, and sort of, I don't quite know what scale this is. I think it's probably around about a six scale, very similar to, uh, you know, the Elect Rider. But um, I didn't have any bits and pieces or anything so I've had you know I had to make the whole lot so this little bike here um, the actual wheels were milled on a rotary table back in the day uh, same as the uh, the mock discs on the front and you know I, went, I sort of made it as I went along didn't have a draw and all I had was the dimensions for the frame so because I see all the lit riders with the swinging or the what they call them pendulum forks, I didn't know any different, so I went along with the pendulum forks on this one. Um, also, I had a few gears. This is off a, a Mustang X3, this gear. Um, you know, it all sticks out a bit. But the reason it sticks out a bit, because I've got a Pico 21 in there, in the bike the size of, um, you know, an Elect Rider. Because when I first built this bike, it had pendulum forks and I had a Vico 19 in it, um, which couldn't pull the skin off a of rice pudding. It was like, uh, oh, I don't know. I think the stock car boys used to like them, but it was really underpowered, you know, engine. But it was just to experiment to see how I could get this bike to run. So I had the pendulum forks in it and I couldn't get it. it. It was all like the Elect Rider. You know, 
I built it and it used to weave and it, you know, it just, it just used to crash all the time and everything, you know. And I, I couldn't get to the bottom of it. Um, to one day, I went up to my local model shop and like I said to you before, I had a DWA up there and it had the direct steering, which, you know, I couldn't work out how it it would work, but it had direct steering, which, as you can see on here, is what I'm running. So, you know, it goes left to go right. Oh, I can't move that now, but it's it's all on there. So it's linked up to off that servo onto this little linkage here with two sprung. As you know, two sprung um, steering rods, and they're locked up. You can see in there, I've got a very uh, elaborate kind of um, pendulum set up in there, which I had first of all. Uh, if you can see in there, look, see. So that was originally what I made up for it, but you know, I locked it up. Um, I think I've got some many plates on there. Yeah, I locked it up uh, and I thought I'd go down this route of having you know, direct steering. So, as soon as I put the direct steering on it, well, it was a whole different ball game then. I could get the bike absolutely flat out with that little Vico in. You know, it was like, and I wanted more power. Um, and back in the day, you didn't really have a lot of choice. And I was running buggies, uh, you know, Mustangs and Serpents and stuff like that. And we all had sort of a few spare engines now. And a friend of mine had a Pico 21. And it, it was past its sell-by date. It needed a piston liner and, you know, bearing and stuff like that. But I think I got it off him cheap. And I decided to... Uh, build a bike around that engine. Well, I don't know if you can imagine trying to get a, a Pico 21 in there. It was quite a, quite a feat, really. I mean, it's covered in dust because I've not had it off the shelf for ages. I mean, look at it. Um, but you can see I've actually shoehorned that engine in there. I had to cut the head to clear servos and stuff like that. Can you see in that head there? And these are the, quite an old servos, if I can remember, remember right what they are. The 148 in there, and I think there's a really older one actually in there. But, you know, I did all this kind of, it, it, before it was kind of, all right, I did see DWA, but I had the servos in here anyway. So it was kind of, I was going along the right lines and not actually realising it. Uh, I even made my own rear shock. Uh, let's turn this round. I actually turn this shock up. Let's put my little light pen on it again. Um, yeah, I can see in there. Actually turn that shock. That's made out of a nylon material that I had and I found a spring and it's got a little um, piston in there. Cut the O-ring. So that's actually oil damped in there. Uh, this chain I think came off of... Um, I think it was, oh, I can't remember what that came off now. I know we found it sort of hanging around. Everything we've sort of salvaged and found, you know, might have been a printing machine or something like that. Um, and obviously I had to make it quite wide. And you see the spur gear there because it was such a big engine. Uh, really, looking at it again now, I could have moved the engine over a bit further so not have it sticking out so much on one side you can see it's kind of hanging out but it was such a big engine you can see if i had it where are you if i had that sticking out more of the other side i was trying to get it kind of equal you would have you know the head sticking out of the other side of the, the fairing so what i thought was well, i'll go down this road and and see what we got so i made a, a swinging arm uh made the gear carrier. I've got quite a small 
uh, opinion on there. I can't remember what it was now. Uh, I made my own fuel tank. That's made out of copper. I've got a sticker on it. Oh, yeah. I entered this for the uh, Model Engineer exhibition. I've got a date on there. I can't see what the date is. Well, my eyes can't see. But, you know, that might have been in 87, something like that. Well, I, that was my pass badge. But I think I got third place at Alexander Palace with this model. I took it up there and exhibited it. And I think I got third place for it. Which, and it was up against some really nice models, you know, like the horse and carriage. I think I put it in the wrong category, really. But, you know, I, I was pleased with this. I've got a starter that comes off this little wheel here. God, that engine's sticky. Um, it's probably not been run for about 20 years. Because um, what I did, I sort of done it all up, put a new fairing on it and stuff like that. Done it up for the show. Um, and I don't think I actually run it after that because these are only the elect rider tyres and they're very soft. I mean, they're quite good actually, but it tears them up. You know, this little Pico 21, it wheelies. This bike will wheelie and it just spins the wheel all the time because it's got so much power, you know. I mean, the fifth scales, you know, they run on a 15 or a, a 12, don't they? I've got an over Rossi with a 12 in it, you know, and, and that's a, a quite a fast bike. But can you imagine this has got a 21 Pico in it, you know, it's no slouch. But it could do it gearing up a bit, but... As I say, all the stuff here is what I had hanging about, and I machined like a subframe to put the engine in. You can't really see it in there, but between the bottom of the frame, there's like a subframe where the engine fits in, and then the frame bolts to the subframe. Now, I've got a little battery pack from back in the day. I doubt that'll ever work again. Um, so the wheels, I turned them up, and they were machined out of a bit of billet alley. Also made swinging on myself. Uh, it's all ball raced. We've got disc brake, which runs off the lay shaft in there. You can see that turning, which is really powerful. These brakes always seem to work well. Uh, very complicated linkages, you know. I used to just think, right, I'm going to put a brake there and worry about it later. So I used to just sort of bolt something on there and worry about how it was going to work afterwards. And I sort of gave myself a lot of headaches by doing it that way. I sort of changed a bit these days and I'll try and think what where's a linkage go, how good you know easy it is to get apart, you know. I mean look at the thing is with these fairings as well, I don't know what the plastic is for these fairings, but this was a new one and they break all the time. I know there's a guy making some new ones, so I might get another one on that and uh, sort of if I ever run it again, keep this one on, a bit of shoe goo on there. I made all these guards, this is all strong piano wire. I made all them guys to save the bike. Uh, I made the handlebars like really strong, so if it, when it goes over, it just scrapes along on these these two bars here. So it's quite. It doesn't really do a lot of damage. This protects the gear really well. That protects the front a bit, you know, the uh, fairing. It has got front suspension. Uh, I've got these are nylon forks. Uh, they work quite well, actually. They're quite sort of damp. They're not all damp to anything, you know, but they're... They work quite nice. They're quite smooth. Um, it's all kind of... You know, we had to run the big servos, and I, I think I had a big receiver going in across the frame there. Um, and it was so good with the... I mean... I mean I didn't know. There's a bike over there that I'm going to show you in a minute, if I can just swing this around. That is the Kyosho, or Grupna. Uh, that is the Race Rider, which I believe is one of the first sort of IC bikes. And all this sort of stuff passed me by, even the Elect Rider, I kind of didn't realize it because I could have used them wheels and saved myself a lot of work by putting them on this one. I mean, the body, you know, this is based on like a, a Yamaha, even though I measured the frame off of my Honda. I love the look of it. I think it was an F, FZR 600. And I love the look of it. And that's why I made myself some bodywork like this. Now, this is made out of fiberglass. You couldn't buy anything, you know, back in the day, so I made a mould and I made this out of fibreglass and I painted it 
uh, yeah, I matched it up with that, and it looks quite, it looks quite nice really. It's it's a, a nice looking bike, and it used, I used to run the little, you know, the little Elect Rider fabric man. Well, it's not very, don't look very good. It sort of hangs on the bike. Uh, gets filthy dirty as well when you crash it down the road a few times. So the rider that you can see, the rider you can see on this bike is one that I made. So let's see if I can get him off. God, that's all close. To <sighs> right. Now I made this rider figure many years ago. And I made out of, um, I forget, it was like a foam. It was like a hard foam inside. And I sort of based him on the Kyosho sort of rider, but made it bigger. And I kept, I glued the foam together and then I kept carving it away to try and make it look like, you know, a, a rider. And um, I carved it. It weighs nothing. It is so light, you wouldn't believe it. But then I carved it away in foam and then I covered it with polyester resin. And then I rubbed the resin down and then I painted it. It used to be all white to go on this. It goes on this bike here. As you can see, it fits on there nice. But when I restored the race rider, the rider you get with that again is one of them cloth riders. And I thought, oh no, I've got a rider that I don't use. And I wanted to run this bike. So I painted it black to make it look kind of old school. So... Let's move my tea. We've got like, I'll just put that back on the stand. This is uh, an early race rider. Now I bought this off a, a friend of mine. It had been half started uh, and, and he'd left it. It's kind of been sitting there and I went round it and I fell in love with it. All it was was a frame uh, an engine, a new engine, a frame, uh, a few bits and pieces, the wheels. There's no bearing, no tank, um, you know, lots of bits and pieces missing on it. So I thought to myself, I don't know, I really fancy the idea of this. You know, it, it's a beautiful little bike. Uh, again, it's kind of based on like the Elect Rider. Uh, it is, the frame is different. It's different up here. Um, I've got the old field shocks on there. But it's slightly different, so it is different. A uh, different swinging arm mount, I think. The gearbox is different. It's got quite a complicated linkage for the throttle and the brake. Uh, the brake is in there. And if you can see, it's got like a little copper brake shoe. I mean, really, I should have took this body off, but there you go. If you can see in there, there's a little drum there. And on that drum, it's like a throw though. It's actually a bit of a clutch line out of one of my helicopters. And it's got a little copper uh, brake shoe that actually pulls up on this bell crank. Can you see that bell crank there? Pulls that up from a servo that goes across the frame. Now, I had to make the flywheel for it. Hang on, let's just move this camera down a bit. Uh, right, yeah. So, I had to make the flywheel. I had to source a tank because uh, it's a, a, a little tank that fits in a tiny little. There you go. A uh, little tank fits in there. Let's, I'll bring it up. That's quite a, a little tank. And you can't really fit anything else in there because there's hardly any room. And you can see the servos on the top here. So this one operates the brake through a bell crank that goes down and it also operates the throttle for another bell crank which goes up to the carburetor. Quite a sort of ingenious setup, but very kind of fiddly to get right. And there's a little, if you can see inside there, if I just pull the fairing open, I'll put my little, where's my light pin? Oh, it's gone. Oh, it is. If I put, a little light, I don't know if you can see. There's a belt down there, there you go. Now that little tooth belt runs on a little gear there. And my friend actually got them belts. I think that's even off a printing machine as well. And he got the pulleys. 
but kind of really as far as he had sort of gone. Um, and I've sort of wanted to sort of finish it off. So it was kind of there. But the important things like bodywork and stuff like that, which is, you know, impossible. When you think, I think, I believe this is 1976. That's a 1976 model. And, you know, to try and find bits for it, I had the handlebars, but I really wanted a tank and a bodywork. Now, you know, the price of the tank, I actually found one in Germany, because a lot of this stuff comes from Germany. And the price of the tank, I think, was about £80, you know, for something that's probably worth a fiver back in the day. But if you are like me and you want to finish off a model how it was, this is what you did, you know, you have to do. You can't have a model with the wrong tank or something like that, you know, it's got to be right. And if you want to sell it and move it on, it's got to be right. So I managed to buy the tank and then I thought, what am I do for bodywork? I had visions of putting on the Let Rider bodywork, but the race rider was slightly different and I wanted, you know, the, the genuine race rider body. But I thought, I'm never going to find one of them. And would you believe it, I think about a week later after I bought the tank, a set of bodywork turned up, brand new, on eBay. I think it was about £125, so I bought, the, I bought it straight away. So that was a tank and a seat unit. Now this plastic, I mean, bear in mind what it costs, you treat it with like kid gloves, you know, and it's very awkward to drill. Um, you've just got a kind of, you have to use like a Dremel, like I said to you when I was fixing my helicopter. By the way, that's flying really nice now, but... You had to drill the these plastic with like a, a little grinder and a very thin kind of grinding wheel. And even then, after I sort of got it together, there's little splits appearing around the holes, you know, and I've done a wheel wet and dry and everything. And the body is kind of like, I can see cracks in it now from just sitting on the shelf. I've done it if it's polycarbonate or something like that, you know, and it's very, it's heartbreaking really because you spend hours and hours cutting it out painting it, fitting it on, and then it just sits there. Well, I have run it quite a lot, and it sits there, and, you know, you pick it up a month later and you find little cracks on it. Um, you know, I've never crashed it or anything like that. you got, like, twin... Another headache was the twin exhaust. Um, if you can see them in there... You've got like, can you see the springs around them? Now, I had to make the header because you didn't have one. And I sort of copied pictures of it. And it's also got like springs on them to hold them in that shape. And they go up the back into two lovely little twin, twin pipes. Can you see the two little exhausts on there? Lovely little thing. And those shocks... They're all filled. I think they were like, um, they put them on a lot of them, their bikes. So I think there was an option for the Lit Rider, an option for um, the Harley Davidson, which I'll probably do a video on later because that's a lovely little thing to run. Um, so these shocks, they're aftermarket part. But honestly, they are so hard, the back wheel wouldn't even move. You know, it, it was. I don't know what it was in the old days, but it used to make springs solid. I don't, you know, it weren't worth having springs because you know, on their top, oh no, on Tamiya, on their type of Hilux and all that, the leaf springs, and you could stand on it and they wouldn't move, you know. Well, these coal springs were the same. So I've cut almost 10 millimetre off a length of these springs to try and get the, you know, get a nice action on them, which it works quite well, you know. I mean, they're, they're all filled shocks. You know, it's still a little bit stiff, but they work quite well. And the same with the, the front. It's rock, you know, rock solid. So, you know, I've made, um, I'll cut the forks down. And I made the forks quite soft. And you can see it all kind of working. I mean, let's just move my hand away. And you can see it's quite a nice action, but the back's still a little bit hard. Um... 
But yeah, that you know, that was the thing to sort the handling out on this bike. And once again, Kyosho 1976 had pendulum forks. Now, I took it out with the pendulum forks because I thought, well, it won't be that quick with a little RS10. Oh, yeah, it's got a little RS10 engine in it. Plain bearing crank, RS10. And I thought, well, it's not going to be that fast. Anyway, I took it out with the pendulum forks, started her up, and it sounded also it sort of sipped up the road these little engines get to a sort of i don't know what revs they do but they get to a point and they won't go no more no matter actually lean them out or reach them up they won't go anymore so it sort of zips away but the top speed i mean it actually wheel spins but the top speed is not great but i'm not worried about that it's just a piece of history co show history which is pretty rare to find i mean i've actually got a youtube video of this running so if you want to look through my videos you'll see this running um, and it's a lovely little thing but once again with the pendulum forks it kept on weaving and I, I didn't actually crash it but you know it kept on weaving and uh, it, it was it wasn't good but I could see our potential so I brought it home straight away I've done away with the pendulum forks I've got a little angle bracket in there you can see just in there, I'll put an angle bracket in there and bolt it to this uh, pendulum assembly here so it couldn't move. And then you can keep the servo exactly where it is, which is behind here for the steering. And instead of running the rod up to the little bell crank to actually work, you know, the pendulum forks like that, all you've got to do is drill a little hole. Where is it? Let's get my light again. A little hole. I can't see it now. Let's see if I can get it highlighted for you in the yokes. Can you see the little brass? There's a little brass collet there. So I've just drilled a hole in the bottom yoke, put a piece of piano wire through. You can see that piece of piano wire there. And that goes through into that little hole. And I've got a little brass collet on the other side. Let's, let's see if I can get a better picture of it. There you go, little brass, little brass collet. So it stops it coming out. So under here, I've got a rod from the yokes, goes all the way back to the servo there. Obviously, it's spring loaded, so it can go. And I took it out the next week, and what a difference. You can get this thing flat out, all right? It's not that fast. Uh, acceleration is lovely, but it handles unbelievable. It never looks like it's going to crash. It just goes on and on. You can run tank after tank with it. You know, it just looks so nice. I mean, I've done it up in them colours to try and make it look a little bit retro. It's like the Mike Howard kind of colours. I didn't like the... I am a bit of a box art man, as many people would tell you, but I couldn't, uh, I couldn't live with that box art colour scheme. So I thought, well, I'll do it my own sort of way. And I did it with... A Tamiya paint looked up a few pictures and I thought yeah that looks quite quite nice I made my own sort of decals for it I haven't gone too mad with it and I kind of made it look like the little Honda that Mark Howard used to run around on and I say the rider that's on there came off of this one originally so let's move her out of the way this is what it was originally to go on onto this bike because you know this one was my first bike my first icy bike and it wasn't the first icy bike which i thought it was because the race rider which is over there number three was i believe um, the first kind of icy bike it, the six scale i believe and since this scratch built one that's based on sort of elect rider sizes not you know i think it's a bit bigger uh, but obviously it's not fifth and we've got my let's move some of this around I've got my little yz10 which has kind of been sitting around because i've got the truck going and i've got the aprilia i'm working on but I've been doing a little bit now and again. 
I think this one was out in 76, yeah, 76, 78. So kind of the race rider, not sure where the elect rider came out, but a race rider and this would be around about the same time. So anyway, I've been working on the radio on this one. It's not been easy. What I've managed to buy, I put two little HS, what are they? High tech servos in there, HS 65s. Uh, they're quite powerful little servo, ever so small. And I've got the little, um, the little miniature Spectrum receiver, three channel. So I managed to get that in there. And what I had to do underneath here, I had to brace a couple of little plates. I made a new plate up thin like the other one. So under here, I, I braced two little plates on and I screwed this radio plate, some little screws there. I screwed that onto there so it's really nice and solid. Now we've got, if I plug this in, I'm still using Greg's cup, it's fantastic. Um, all right, I'll plug this in. Should be on the right memory. Now this battery is gonna go down here on a bit of Velcro. Because we made this seat. My mate made it for me. He kind of did like a, a rough seat for me. He, uh, he's done a lovely job. And I kind of, when I got it, it weren't quite right to the bike. So I did a, you know, like a bit of hammering and I, I sort of raised it up at the front here to make it sort of curl up. Uh, and I rounded underneath, I've rounded these off. So it sort of clips on the bike quite tight. Um, and I think it looks all right. I mean, let's see if I can get this on. I mean, the battery's got to be Velcroed on, but you know, that clips on there quite nice. I'm going to have to put a little switch at the back, but it matches up with the tank quite well. Now, we've got the throttle working. You can see the, th the throttle there, that's, um... now that works off the left servo and that also works the brake, which has been a sort of bit of a headache. I'll show you the brake. Everything else is quite easy to do. I mean, I've locked the forks up, screw in there, it's like it's made for it. Um, so we've got We've got the rear brake, which comes from the servo underneath here. The cable runs down and goes on to the back wheel. You can see it sort of moving. Hang on, let's move this away. So, uh, that's the brake working. Uh, it works quite well. It's really hard because... In the instructions, they showed it with like a solid piece of piano wire and I couldn't get it to work with that. So I've kind of gone my own way with a little uh, clevis on there. Um, I want to paint that black so you can't see it. And it's quite sort of complicated when it gets up under the seat. I'll just show you the setup on there. So we've got the cable. Um, where are we? We've got the cable, which runs from the servo, which is there. So you've got, the thing is, they both got to go the same way, which is a bit of a pain. So they've all got, the two controls have got to come off the same side. So the throttle's got to come off the right hand side and so has the brake. So we've got the cable coming off through there and down to the back wheel. You see that cable going right around there. And we've got the throttle, which comes off the other side. So it's all packed in to that little unit there. Now I'm gonna put a switch on. Oh, I've just dropped the tank. So, oh, I found it. Normally I drop something on my garage floor, and never see it again. But that's, that brake works, you know, really well. You know, it's got quite a, that's gonna slow it down really well. So that, the brake's quite well, but that took a long while to, you know, to get working. The steering, 
uh, we've got from another servo the other side which will uh, so that's the steering on that side just puts a bias on the wheel we've got the same movement left and right and that comes off of that little servo back there see it's sprung you've got two little springs there and I've got it fairly soft at the moment so you know it's kind of it's all spring loaded so you know it just puts a bias on that wheel a bias on the wheel just to turn it and once it turns over I think I probably have to come with a bit more you know travel on the servo and maybe uh, a little bit stronger springs but the softer you have this you know the better it will track because it'll self cast as soon as you start tightening the springs up at the back here it gets more responsive yes but it don't like going in a straight line. So as it is now, it should go in a straight line and it probably won't turn, you know, turn like the Titanic. But I don't mind. Um, I think I might have to do something this little bit here because it's just, just clipping it, see? But, you know, that's not really a, a problem, too much of a problem. So, that's how far I've got. I think it looks quite nice with a seat on there like that. And, you know, the, the throttle's working really nice and the, the brake works really nice. We've got the steering, so it kind of really now, I need to tear it down again, and I need to go through it all and lock tight it. Oh, that's the other thing. I've had a lot of guys saying to me that these forks are on the wrong way round. Now, okay, if you're going to be a proper scale man, they should be at the front, and they were on the real ones. But Kosha, I've done this, and it's the same in the manual, because it helps it cast up. If you can see all the yokes, they all sort of lean back. Not a shopping trolley wheel. When you push a shopping trolley along, you watch the wheels, they, they self-centre, uh, self-caster. That's what I call like caster wheels. So what Kosha have done is put them on the back here so you've got more caster. You, you may get away with putting them on the front, but it'd probably be really unstable. So this is made to act like a shopping trolley wheel. And then when you put the bias on the wheel, it'll steer. But I've had a lot of guys pointing out to me, I've got them on the wrong way, but they're not on the wrong way. That's how they should be, and that's how Coach Show done them. Now, the other thing I've done is with the handlebars, because, you know, the handlebars, standard form, the handlebars were down here somewhere, you know, and, and they were there. You know, that they just looked totally wrong. So, seeing as I've sort of done away with the whole standard back of the bike and gone my own way with that I thought I'd go my own way with the handlebars so it's quite a simple little mod I've put a little bracket in there can you see a little bracket and I've screwed the handlebars to that which I think is kind of a lot more scale and nearer the forks you know I've got lots of pictures of real ones and you know, uh, it never looked like a real one <laughs> But it's, it looks sort of similar. Now, suspension-wise, I did manage to find a stronger spring for the back. I haven't, haven't put any uh, oil in it yet, but it's got a, a really lovely action, you know, compared to the uh, big brass thing that was in there. And I think a little bit of thin oil in there is going to be lovely. And the front ones, I haven't done anything to them yet. Um, but, they, you know... They don't actually work too, you know, too sad. They, they work quite nice, really. Um, a little bit rough feeling, but I, I might have a look at doing something with them um, when I get the time, because at the moment I'm doing so many other little bits and pieces. But I think, you know, with the exhaust like here and this out the back, I think you'd agree it looks quite a, like a nice little proper scale little bike. Yeah, I think it looks better than when Kyosho made it. And yet, I just fancy going for a little ride on it myself. Now that, I think that with the engine is a really lovely thing to look at. I've still got to put the casing on there, but I'm not going to do it just yet. That's the engine turning over. I haven't got the chain on it yet, but that can wait because, like I say, it all needs sort of tearing apart and it needs finishing off, you know. Um... Also, a little bit concerned about the tank because the fuel, you know, it's going to come out here. And I think if I run it down and back up to the carburetor, it might not flood. I'm hoping it's not going to flood because, you know, gravity is going to push that down, you know. 
I could put a little tap on it or something like that. Um, well, we'll see how that goes in the future. So that's where I am with that. Still not sure how I'm going to do the wheels. I'm probably going to have to cut this pipe down a little bit to bring her in. But I need to put oil in the shock. I need to go through. I did all of the shape of these as well. Uh, I unbraced them because they was a little bit twisted. Unbraced them and redone them. You can see I've got a few screws missing out because it's just kind of a dry build and I've just put it together. But I'm looking now that I think soon I'll be able to take that apart, uh, lock tie it all up and maybe, uh, you know, start it up. I'd love to hear what it sounds like. I was thinking of uh, the expansion exhaust on here. I don't know what it's been glued with, but it came apart at the top here. I don't know whether it's been glued with a something like Evo stick or something. So I'm thinking of see if I can get it apart if it's not too bad and doing it with super glue, you know, cyano will stick that really well. So, you know, it, and I'm gonna put a switch, a little switch in the back of the seat here. Um, if you see this just should just unclip like that. And once that battery's in there with a switch on, it should be fine. This tiny little battery, but it'd be fine for that. It's 900 milliamp hour. And, you know, I don't think I'm going to need anything else to put the seat on. It kind of clips on really nice. Um, yeah, so I obviously need a rider. I hate the rider that you get with it. I think you might have seen it. I don't think it's going to fit on it anyway. So I don't think it's, it's going to fit. So I want to try and make my rider look like it. I've got a lot of pre-65 scrambles. And I really want the rider to look like one of them where they wear like a kidney belt and um, a sort of like a green top, you know, uh, and boots that you know, look really cool. And an old fashioned crash helmet and goggles, something like that. So I'm always looking around at action men and stuff like that, you know. Whether I can actually make one, I know I've done it before, but yeah, maybe I could, I don't know. But anyway, that's where we are with my bikes, you know. This is the one that kind of started it all, you know, which I really like, you know, I'd never, never sell with that. This is my race rider. I mean, some people wouldn't run this, but you know, if you look, watch my videos, if you go back and watch my video of this running, you'll see how nice it was. It was absolutely beautiful thing to run, you know, it's just lovely. Um, but it sits on its shelf. Now and again, if someone's interested, I'll take it out. But I don't just take it out for the sake of it. If I've got a friend who wants to see it go or someone wants to see it go, I'll take it out and, you know, and that's what I do. So I'm going to wrap this one up. My Tamiya truck, who I haven't touched, it's still where it was, but the gearbox is in. Um, I think you've seen it all with the gearbox working. The drive shafts are on. So now I'm waiting from engine DIY, it's been quite a while, for the two igniters, for the two glow plugs, twin cylinder. And then once I got them, I can have a go working out a relay to ignite them as well as the starter, um, you know, and, and that will be, you know, the progress on that. I think putting the servos in is going to be quite easy. On the high lift, I can pull it right at the front, uh, similar to the 407. Uh, and I think the gear shift uh, is not too much of a problem either. I'm going to run a separate servo on the throttle so I can kill the throttle. Um, and that's basically why I'm with, it, with that. But uh, tomorrow I'm hoping to finish polishing up the swinging arm for the Aprilia. And I've got a little bit of clean up to do. But I found out the, uh, the width of these clearance washers, these elusive clearance washers that... Um, I can't find, but I found him on the bay, and the guy said to me they're two point three three thick, um, and they're made out of nylon, which I thought they were or plastic. So now I know that I've got the bearings. I've got to make a couple of. I've got a bit of silver steel somewhere. Uh, I don't know. I've got the silver steel, and I've got to make uh, two sleeves and I harden them. So maybe tomorrow. I may have the swinging arm back in there, which well, I really want to get back in there so I can uh, get it on the stand so I don't have to keep bending down because it's killing my back. So anyway, guys, my tea's got cold, but 
I hope you liked the video. Subscribe, give me a thumbs up. I'm very sorry I didn't answer my comments. I, I, I must read my comments. I always forget about reading my comments. And there's a lot of you guys out there asking me about the forks and what material I use and stuff like that. I promise you, I will answer you. I just completely sort of forgot. I, I am quite new to doing these videos and uh, I quite enjoy doing them. I think people like them. Um, so I will get back to you. If you have anything you want to ask me about these models or anything in sort of radio control, uh, you know, as long as it's not too technical on radios and that, but if it's anything sort of mechanical, making parts, or what I've done to the direct steer and stuff like that, I mean, there's a lot more I did to this, but, you know, like screwing the discs on and stuff like that to get rid of all the play out of the bikes, but it, it'll take me ages to tell you all about that. But I might tell you when I do the Harley Davidson video, because the Harley Davidson is a, a beautiful thing to run as well. And I've got that going so well. I've actually upped the motor. So it's a 380, but I'll put like a 380, um, like a high power motor in it. And uh, that's a lovely thing with lights and whatever on it. Whether you like Harley Davidson or not, I don't know. But it's a sort of same era as all these. And uh, there's quite a few of them around, you know, nice looking bikes. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up, guys. And uh, keep safe and I'll see you in the next one.